welcome back to another video from the Grumpy Agent Gamer PSVR playing the Chantry. Steel Minions were kind enough to send me an advanced copy of the game. So pre-warned, there will be spoilers. It's very clear, it's very crisp. So yeah, let's get on, let's have a look. Don't really know anything about this game. Beside the trailer. So yeah, let's see see what unfolds. Decisions of no value. From the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. Then said his friends unto him, Know that God exacteth of thee less than thine iniquity deserveth. And Job answered and said, My flesh is clothed with worms and clods of dust. My skin is broken and become loathsome. But ye are forgers of lies. Ye are all physicians of no value. Oh. He's cross. 10th of February, 1823. The Chantry. What? Where am I? This place is familiar. Not been here for years. I thought you had a foot so back here. To make it feel so and press any button to move in that position. Okay. So I can go to the big house or the smaller house. Let's go to the big one because that's the way I was facing. There's something written on the door. Physician. Let's try the door handle. Hmm. I don't like locked doors. I need to remember who lived here. My memory's still a bit hazy. Very foggy. I'm not climbing through no windows. I'm in enough trouble already. Difficult to see, but I think that's the breakfast room. Can't see anything inside. I think it's a false window. Something to do with symmetry. Something else may jolt my memory further. Like what? I can't see what else. I think to be at an impasse. There's no route, is there? Yeah, that wasn't there before, was it? Oh, I am most wretched when alone, as every surrounding object reminds me of my irreparable loss. But no place on earth would at present suit me but my Barclay home, and I trust my friends will not endeavour to take me away, for the bitter cup has a kind of relish in it here, which it could afford nowhere else. I remember now. This was the home of that doctor. He was quite notorious in his day. Trophy! Okay. I've been soused. It's like being there all those years ago. That letter was written the day before he died. Bit spooky. My dear William. 
I hear by your father that you will be re that you will return in a few days to Bristol. Be assured you will take with us my best wishes and affections. I am happy to certify that no boy could behave better than you did during your stay with me at the Chantry. Pursue this line of good conduct, my dear William, and you'll be happy yourself and make your father and everyone who loves you happy too. Your affectionate uncle, FJ. Why didn't that glow her up? The Barclay family crest. Not much use at the moment. All oh, right, so this I have painting to... don't belong here. I'd remember an expensive piece like theirs. It would look more at home inside Berkeley Castle. This painting don't belong here. I'd remember an expensive piece like theirs. It would look more at home inside Berkeley Castle. A map of the county might be useful later. Oh, I see, sir. I need to come back. It's inscribed with the name Watley Montague. Heard that name before or somewhere. Now, I don't remember there being a Turkish lantern clock in the hallway. That letter was written the day before he died. Bit spooky. The Barclay family crest. Not much use at the moment. What? Can I go over there? It's inscribed with the name Watley Montague. Heard that name before or so. This was a doctor's country home. He had a townhouse somewhere in these parts, too. Can't remember where, but it'll come back to me. This quite interesting. This place, Chantry Cottage. I don't remember why, but there's been grand buildings around here for centuries. This is where the doctor carried out his curious studies. I dread to think what kind of experiments he used to get up to in here. Who's this simpleton? I need to remember more before I can go in here. What if it, the River Severn cuts through the English county of Gloucestershire, linking Bristol in the south with Gloucester? The Vale of Barclay lies on the south bank of the river, between the two cities. It was called the Chantry, from having in former times been in the possession of certain monks. It is contiguous to the churchyard of Barclay Castle, and the tower of St. Mary's Church overhangs the southern boundary of the shrubbery. That's it. Trophy. For King Henry, this place were a home for priests. Priests who spent their days saying prayers for the dead. This painting don't belong here. I'd remember an expensive piece like theirs. It would look more... 24th of January, 1823. My dear William, I hear by your father that you will return in a Just few days that, to Bristol. Huh? Be assured you will take Great with faith. you my best wishes and affections. I am happy to certify that no boy could behave better than you did during your stay with me at the Chantry. Pursue this line of good conduct, and you will be happy yourself. Make your... By all accounts, the doctor didn't travel much, but he had correspondence from all around the world. Apples from the doctor's garden. Well, he's a big fella, isn't he? <laughs> I'm quite enjoying this. Another cupboard. I'll have to try a different way. A painting by the doctor's nephew, Stephen. The lady of the house had good taste in furniture. What's this? Thus, our hero, being plundered of his estate and bereaved of his children, says, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath uh. taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. A fine piece of silverware. Might be useful later. A stone bust of Beethoven. No use to me at the moment. At length, the infection spread to the palace and reached the young and blooming queen. She received the intimation of her danger with true greatness of soul. She gave orders that every servant who had not had the smallpox 
should instantly leave Kensington House and then calmly awaited her fate. It's super realistic, isn't it? Like it's really um it's real. I've got no um comments. My wife just messaged me. You love a trophy? I certainly do. The comments aren't working. Just looking at my phone. Right, let's crack on. Crack a lacquer. Lord Dalkeith has been dead of the smallpox for just three days. It is so dreadful in his family. His eldest boy died of it last year, and his only brother, who was ill but two days, died so fast that his limbs fell off as they lifted him into the coffin. All the children that died. Three, four, seven, thirteen and ten years old. Fifteen year old. Oh, that's wrong. A child's toy. I'll leave it here, but I can always come back to it. A fine piece of silverware. Might be useful later. Arr. A stone bust of Beethoven. No use to me at the moment. Pretty interesting. <laughs> of a servant would be too severe were they not allowed some time which they may call their own. In all well-governed families, a maid servant has the liberty every Sunday or every other Sunday of going to church. If she neglects it, it discovers she has little sense of true religion and may well be suspected of failing in her duty to an earthly master and mistress when she fails in that to her maker. Respectable families expect their pound of flesh from domestic servants. Well, he's a big fella, isn't he? Apples from the doctor's garden. If I'm missing something. Small cupboard, but probably bigger than my cell. A painting by the doctor's nephew, Stephen. The lady of the house bigger than my cell. Furniture. Perhaps I should open the shutters before I leave. It was the most terrible of the ministers of death, always present, filling the churchyard Smallpox. with corpses, tormenting with constant fears all whom it had not yet stricken. So in that case, I got. Let's go and see these things. Beethoven and Mozart survived the smallpox with just a few scars, but many that survived it ended up blind as well. Cooking up. Lord Dalkeith has been dead of the smallpox for just three days. It left hideous traces of its power on those whose lives it spurred, turning the babe into a changeling at which the mother shuddered, and making the eyes and cheeks of the big-hearted maiden objects of horror to the lover. It left hideous traces of its power on those whose lives it spurred, uh -huh. turning the babe into a changeling, at which the mother shuddered, and making the eyes and cheeks of the big-hearted maiden objects of horror to the lover. This Six children from the same family lost to the smallpox. Not every family was as unlucky as these poor souls, but one in five of those who Trophy. got it wouldn't live to tell the tale. Unfortunately, not everyone who survived the smallpox could live with the terrible scars it left behind. Sadly, some even took their own lives. The condition of a servant would be too severe were they not ah. allowed some time which they may call their own. In all well-governed families, a maid servant has the liberty every Sunday or every other Sunday of going to church. If she neglects it, it discovers she has little sense of true religion and may well be suspected of failing in her duty to an earthly master and mistress when she fails in that to her maker. Smallpox was a cruel, hideous disease. It's no wonder they call it the Angel of Death. Interesting. Well, he's a big fella, isn't he? 
apples from the doctor's garden. All right. Check Something's it, changed. It. I'm sure those stairs were blocked a minute ago. They were. But let's check the this room. room. That fine mahogany table was the perfect place to make my inventory. That portable desk came with me on all my jobs. Can't believe that miserly pawnbroker only gave me a shilling for it. That portable desk came with mm, me on all that. my jobs. Can't believe that miserly pawnbroker only gave me a shilling for it. The doctor had a lot of paintings, but I never figured out who all the artists were. That's the doctor. His eyes follow you around the room. That's a wine cooler, and he had an impressive collection of wines in his cellar, too. It looks like a genuine work by Bassan. It's been damaged at one point, but preserved with great care. That's one of them Gilray caricatures. I'll come back to it when I've explored a bit more. On Thursday last at 2 o'clock, a balloon was launched from the inner court of Barclay Castle, which rose to a very great height and was visible for a quarter of an hour. The same afternoon, it was seen to descend in a field in the parish of Kingscote, about 10 miles from Barclay. The locals were so much terrified that they could not for some time be prevailed upon to approach it. Ah, there's papers everywhere. I'll come back and tidy it later. A couple of ridicules. This dessert. A small quantity of the serum of human blood was poured over about a square foot of grass. Three sprinklings were given at the distance of a fortnight each, amounting to the serum contained in 40 ounces of blood. The effects it has produced on the vegetation of the grass is astonishing. It is beautifully green and thick and has sprung up several inches, while the surrounding grass has but just begun to shoot and looks of a yellowish green. I wouldn't have left things this untidy. I still have my professional pride back then. That's a wine cooler, and he had an impressive collection of wines in his cellar too. 24th of January, done that, done 1823. That. My dear William, I hear by your father that you will return in a few days to Bristol. Be assured you will take with you what? my best wishes and affections. I am happy to certify that no boy could behave better than you did during your stay with me at the Chantry. Pursue this line of good conduct, and you will be happy yourself. Make your father and everyone who loves you happy too. Your affectionate uncle, no? E.J. This also gives us to consider that diseases are not only judiciously inflicted for past offences, but graciously also designed to prevent future. A little recollection will tell a man whether he has not often been kept virtuous through fear of the consequences, even when inclination has gotten the better of his duty. Certain classes are less liable than others to consumption, either because the exhalation to which they are exposed preserve the lungs in a healthy state, or because they acquire from their mode of life a habit susceptible of the complaint. His eldest son had a feeble constitution and other infirmities which rendered it inexpedient to send him to a public school. A domestic tutor was procured who was little older than his pupil, but though tender in years, he was old in wisdom and knowledge. The doctor's eldest son died of consumption in 1810 at the age of just 21. That's just a cupboard. There's no way through here. Nice landscape. Nice landscape. Selected poems by the late John Dawes Worgan of Bristol, who died on the 25th of July, 1809, aged 19 years. So the young tutor died of consumption the year before the doctor's son. I feel greatly obliged to everyone who attempts to console me in my present affliction. But you, who know so much of the human mind, are convinced how vain are these friendly efforts. I had no conception till it happened that the gash would have been so deep, but God's will be done. He was lying in the last stage of pulmonary consumption. He had repeated hemorrhages from the lungs and was then evidently approaching his end. I was introduced into the sick room and there for the first time I saw Mrs. Jenna, the anxious and constant attendant of her dying child. He met with many discouragements. 
His notions ridicule. having been treated with scorn and ridicule by some, and with indifference by almost all. There was plenty of paperwork in the dining room I could look through. Yeah, I remember. Don't worry about that. That portable desk came with me on all my jobs. Can't believe that. There nibbling at thistles stand Jim, Joe and Mary. On their foreheads, oh horrible, crumpled horns bud. There Tom with a tail and poor William. I have entrusted a most important matter to you, which <laughs> I firmly believe will prove of essential benefit to the human race. I'm going I should a bit not quick, wish what I? I have stated to be brought into conversation. Skip that last one. For should anything untoward happen, I should be made, particularly by my medical brethren, the subject of ridicule. For I am the mark they all shoot at. A small quantity of the serum of human blood. On Thursday last at two o'clock, a balloon was launched from the inner court of Barclay Castle. Then. Which I have entrusted a most important matter to you, which I firmly believe will prove of essential benefit to the human race. This one. I should not wish what I have... On Thursday last at two o'clock, a balloon was launched from the inner court of Barclay Castle. So your book is out at last. Well, I can tell you that there be not a copy sold in our town. Nor shan't neither, if I can help it. You must have believed in something to have resisted so Throw fate. scorn. It's inscribed with the name Watley Montague. I've heard that name before somewhere. Now I don't remember there being a Turkish lantern clock in your way. No, but do you think that's the last, um... Were your interviews for a new housemaid fruitful, Mrs. Knight? Yes, madam. Both girls were hard working and from respectable families. But only the Jones girl has had the pox and plenty of scars to prove it. Then you must select her. I will not risk the health of my family. Pox scarring could often be a path into service. If you were lucky enough to survive the speckled monster, and you couldn't catch it again. Hmm. My memory is still a bit hazy. See, it's like around here has opened up. Before I heard a door open. There we go. This was the doctor's dressing room. Looks more like a laboratory. An unfortunate cuckoo, apparently. Cuckoo? Oh, I see, it's a fetus. William and Mary. She's the queen that died of smallpox. William and Mary. She's the queen that died of smallpox. William and Mary. She's the queen that died of smallpox. Is she the queen that died of smallpox? A paper about cuckoos. Not useful right now. The doctor's previous education nor his habits gave him a relish of any of the branches of pure science. He seemed to have a peculiar horror of arithmetical questions, and he exclaimed that he would rather look for an hour at a mite through a microscope than have his time taken up with such things. What have we got here? I selected a healthy boy, about eight years old, for the purpose of inoculation for the cowpox. The matter was taken from a sore on the hand of a dairymaid, who was infected by her master's cows. It was inserted on the 14th of May, 1796, into the arm of the boy by means of two superficial incisions, barely penetrating the cutis, each about half an inch long. Never seen one of them before. It's got a face like a timepiece. This deserves closer. I opened the thorax of a dog between two ribs and introduced the thermometer. Then I put some lint into the wound to keep it from healing so that the thorax might inflame. But before I had time to try it again from the hurry of business, my dog died. If these experiments will amuse you, I should be glad that they were made. But uh, take care you do not break your thermometer in the dog's chest. John Hunter. Oh. The doctor's experiment scared a lot of people. Trophy. But there is something pretty unnatural about it all. Hey guys, just checking my phone. Fun body. 
Influx Evan T triple three. The Mecklenburg. Yeah, comments are really annoying. I have to keep checking my phone. Does not make for a good stream. It's locked. I need a key for that. It's locked. I need a key for that. Smoking, I am sure, is harmless if used in moderation. A man who has a pipe at his command always... I can't afford to smoke no more. But I reckon I feel better for stopping. Right. So I need a key. William and Mary. She's the queen that died of smallpox. Certain classes are less liable than others to consumption, either because the exhalation to which they are exposed preserve the lungs in a healthy state, or because they acquire from their mode of life a habit susceptible of the complaint. Selected poems by the late John Dorf Worgan of Bristol, who died on the 25th of July, 1809, aged 19 years. I feel greatly obliged to everyone who attempts to console me in my so, present affliction. But you, who know so much of the human mind, are convinced how vain are these friendly efforts. I had no conception till it happened that the gash would have been so deep. But gash. God's will be done. It was called the Chantry, from having in former times been in That's the like Steve Coogan. of monks. It is contiguous to the church. Were your interviews for a new housemaid fruitful, Mrs. Knight? Yes, madam. Both girls were hard working and from respectable families, but only the Jones girl is at the pox and plenty of scars to prove it. Oh, I know. Well, then okay. we must select her. I will not risk the health of my family. Apples from the doctor's garden. Here we go. The doctor's library. Doctor Edward Jenner, that was his name. Looks like the French had their own issues with Jenner's vaccine. He contrived in a short time to accumulate a series of specimens illustrative of comparative anatomy and natural history, which would have formed a museum of no that. inconsiderable magnitude. This is fascinating. Edward Jenner, physician, scientist, and fellow of the Royal Society. I seem to remember her name was Blossom. Doesn't seem relevant at the moment. Something to do with the migration of birds. Not relevant now. Pretty nasty looking sore. Maybe I'll look at this later. The Right Honourable George Rose MP. He helped Jenner create the National Vaccine Establishment. Edward Jenner and his parliamentary friends seeing off the anti-vaccinationists. Phipps went through the cowpox apparently in a regular and satisfactory manner, but the most agitating part of the trial still remained to be performed. It was needful to ascertain whether he was secure from the contagion of smallpox. Looks dangerous. I'll leave it alone for now. The freedom of the city of Dublin. Freedom anywhere sounds good to me. Dr. Jenner set a great value upon these letters. They were carefully preserved in a cover which was inscribed in his own handwriting. Letters from Mr. Hunter to E. Jenner. A I still don't understand why someone would deliberately give cowpox to a healthy boy. This summit's his attention was drawn forcibly to the nature of cowpox while Jenner was yet a youth. A young countrywoman came to seek advice, and the subject of smallpox was mentioned in her presence. She immediately observed... I cannot take that disease, for I have had cowpox. Something to do with the migration of birds. Not relevant now. Sarah Nelms, a dairy maid at a farmer's near this place, was infected with the cowpox from her master's cows in May 1796. Are you in good health, James? It's been eight <laughs> weeks now since you received the cowpox. Yes, sir. So now we must discover Try if you are secure from the contagion of smallpox. We will use the lancet like before. Are you ready? If cowpox wouldn't kill you and it stopped the speckled monster, then it was worth catching it on purpose. But I don't much fancy being given the smallpox afterwards. 